Today I'm joined by Faye and we're here to talk about the Middle East trends. So Faye, what, what have you found um, that's been going on in the last quarter? What have we been seeing? So I think currently with um, summer in the Middle East, it's surprisingly quite good, especially with companies that are expanding over here. Although some more established organizations did have um, slowdown because uh, most of the hiring managers are away at the moment. But surprisingly, um, compared to what we have forecasted, we are getting a lot of requirements. Um, have you noticed any new trends with candidates? Like have you seen more candidates available or candidates looking to move or have have you found that candidates are quite happy in their current um, company wishing to stay there? Yes, absolutely. There are candidates. Um, I would say that majority of the candidates that we have approached, actually, they're not that interested to to move to a new company just, you know, for a few um, thousand increase in salary. It has to be for them a very attractive package overall, not just with the salary, but overall with the the culture of the company, you know, the management that they will be working with and overall the job itself, it has to be something that they, they'd really be excited about. Just um, I've, I've seen that even candidates who are currently seeking um, actively for new jobs, they are not that desperate to move. Candidates now are definitely smarter with, you know, understanding what they really want to do, what they are really seeking. Let's touch base on the hybrid working. I mean, since COVID, this has been such a significant um, want from candidates, you know, with this balance, work-life balance. Um, what trends are you seeing in the market at the moment with hybrid working? Hybrid working, I think maybe a year or two years ago, candidates were really pushing for it. But now that uh, things have been going back, you know, back to normal, um, people are traveling now. I think they do understand now that clients are demanding some um, employees to go back into the office. I think it's it's also made a difference with candidates that, you know, seeing people again, working together in a team and in one office, they're more open to that. I think it's, it's quite good that both um, parties understand that th there has to be some flexibility involved. So a lot of my clients have come up with a new scheme where they offer um, candidates to work remotely through July and August um, as it is the quieter months. And also this um, encourages working mums to have support if they go back to their families, um, say in the UK or the US. Have you noticed that with any of your clients? I think for my desk, um, a majority of my clients do require people to be in the office, maybe just because of their nature of business um, or even the positions that they're in, especially with sales or business development roles. Um, they don't necessarily have to be in the office, but as it is a client facing role, they do need to be more in touch with their clients as well. Um, HR roles as well. Um, most of them do require um, employees to be in the office just because they have to be present. Have you noticed any like other benefits that clients are trying to use to attract top talent at the moment? Anything like out of the norm that we haven't seen before? I would say stock options. Um, some companies do offer that, although uh, I think this would be more akin to higher level positions. They, they used to attract um, candidates before with schooling allowances, but I've been seeing that they do tend to just give it out as a fixed package as a whole. But on top of that, some companies do offer stock options just because it gives the candidates more, let's say, stability with a company that they will be part of that company, whatever the company's profits are, they would also be benefiting off of that. So I think that's a really good um, addition. There's been a, a market increase lately, I would say, within Saudi Arabia. We've seen that um, hiring um, is definitely pushing forwards. Um, what Saudi trends have you noticed recently? industry that I'm seeing a lot of demand in is really still the construction um, industry and the digital transformation industry, just because um, with, with all of these projects happening, they really need people to be on the ground there. Um, what I've been seeing as a trend is that they are now open to more expense. Um, I think it's the Saudization, it's, it's still a big thing, but they do know that they wouldn't really find the right talent just if they focus on Saudi nationals. They're, they're more open to getting expats in. They're really trying to open up the country. They're trying to attract more people to um, live and, and work there. What challenges do you feel that you have with hiring expats to go to Saudi Arabia? Hiring in Saudi Arabia for expat, it's still the same um, as I had the issues before, you know, attracting them, getting them to understand that Saudi is really different now. One of the factors that would be considered is, I guess, um, you know, the, the living situation. 
schooling, there's still some concerns that um, you will be living in a compound, you will be living together with other expats. I've spoken to a few um, job seekers that are really looking for a more livable condition, say if they're working on some NEOM projects. NEOM is quite far from Riyadh, so they, they prefer to be living city as opposed to living you know three four hours away um they really wanted to be more comfortable not for themselves but really just for the for the family and also what advice would you give to candidates in the market at the moment that are looking to move jobs making sure that when you apply jobs you really have to go through the job description um what i've seen a lot with candidates nowadays is they just apply for any jobs out there um they see the job title they don't bother reading the description so they end up spamming their application to recruiters and they end up not getting any callbacks just because they don't see that um say a specific job is looking for a requirement say an arabic speaker but they're a westerner they're indian or pakistani so i think really going through the job description making sure that you actually match to um, the job requirement is important. At the same time, I think really improving your profile, say something as simple as getting additional certifications, um, taking trainings, it would really improve your profile. And I think it would also highlight to employers that um, you're really keen on improving yourself and uh, you know developing your growth. Lastly, what CV advice would you give to candidates looking to move roles right now? So with CVs, I think for us as recruiters, it's a really a big thing having, you know, a, a very detailed CV, but make sure that it's easily readable. As for us um, recruiters, that we don't really enjoy having all of this colorful um, CVs with all of this um, graphics. So it makes us look away from your CV. It, it's kind of distracting. So when you prepare your CV, I think better to keep it, you know, simple, detailed, but uh, still very direct to the point. Make sure that you also use keywords for the job that you are applying for. Okay, thanks, Faye. That's great. Thank you, Zara.